Check out these great looking trim wheels. They're straight off my 3D printer with no sanding or any other preparation other than one simple technique for adding this white lettering. I worked out the basic method of doing this quite a few months ago but I've refined it a few times since and I thought it was time to make this short video to explain exactly how to do it to achieve the best results with the minimum hassle. Stick around and I'll explain how right now. And if you like what I'm doing here, why not subscribe? You'll get to see more content like this and you'll help other people find it too. One more thing before I get to the technique. If you're wondering what these trim wheels are, they're from a P51D Mustang and they're part of a fully functional set of flight controls that you can use with Microsoft Flight Simulator, DCS and any other simulator. As I said, they are 3D printed and I have to say that if you have never used a 3D printer before, these would be a great start as they're so easy to print. You could pick up a printer for a couple of hundred dollars, download the files for these wheels and in very little time you'd have these three wheels on your own desk. And this is how the trim wheels will be mounted to this pedestal that comprises trim wheels and a landing gear lever as well as flaps lever. I can't wait to finish this, just don my VR headset and wrap a P51 Mustang around me with the authentic feeling of replica flight controls to hand. And when I do, you're entirely welcome to download all the files to 3D print the pedestal from download.authenticate.org at absolutely no charge. This is a community freeware project. What's that? You say you can't wait? You want to get started now? Why not? Okay, as these actual wheels are now finished, I have already uploaded them to the Authenticate website. So if you visit it right now, you can grab those wheels and then you can practice this white lettering technique just as soon as they come off your printer. Okay, let's get started. Here are the trim wheels. We've got the elevator trim just straight off the printer. That's straight off the printer as well, the aileron trim. And then the rudder trim. There's a little bit of white in here. I'll just explain what I was doing there. Again, all, all it's had since it came off the printer was I tried a different technique for white lettering. Uh, somebody suggested it uses a white um, sort of furniture wax. And it, it's, it's good in many ways in that you get a nice, hard, strong, sort of robust finish. But I just didn't find it so easy with printed PLA. Uh, printed PLA, unless you do all the sanding and preparation, which I don't really have the patience for, you get these little grooves and then the, the wax can get into those grooves and I just found it impossible to to get it out. So there's just a little bits here I've been trying to scrub it free and I've got little bits of wax in there. So I have found that method, for me anyway, there may be some other process, but for me not quite as easy to do with printed PLA as the method I'm going to show you. And for that you will need some white silicon. Now this is the stuff that you use for bathrooms around the edges, you know, to stop the water running down. It comes in big tubes with a gun. You can also get small tubes for small jobs. So that's what I would recommend. You will need an artist's brush. Now I didn't have any of these. I don't do arts and crafts and things like that. And I did find, I found that it was cheaper to buy this pack of acrylic paints, which came with three brushes, and I'll probably use the smaller one as well, than just to buy the brushes. And also I've now got some acrylic paints. So I think I will just have a little dabble. Um, there are some things I just want to touch up in yellow. So I've got some yellow and I will give that a try. Um, but anyway, that's a great way of getting hold of the brushes quite affordably for like five pounds or something like that. Amazing value. You'll also need some cling film. I'll explain later what that's for. And a lid, just some sort of tin lid. We're going to pour some detergent into that. And by detergent, I mean this fairy liquid, washing up liquid, um, whatever you've got to hand. In the UK, everybody knows fairy liquid. So that's what we need. Let me explain the three simple steps for how we're going to do this. First of all, we're going to prepare the surface of each of the trim wheels. We don't basically want the white silicon anywhere but in the grooves. And a good technique that I was tipped off about was to use fairy liquid to place around the edge of the grooves so that when you rub the silicon over the top you get this sort of non-stick area 
and then it basically is a lot easier to remove the silicon. So that will be step one. We paint on the fairy liquid where we want it. Step two, after we've dried it, is that we apply the silicon and we just rub that into the grooves. And then we let that dry and then step three is that we peel off and tear off and just drag off the little strands of silicon that we don't want. So let's get started with this elevator trim wheel. The first step is just dispense a little bit of your fairy liquid into your tin lid and that's way more than we'll need. So it's not going to be a lot that we're going to use. And now I'm just going to put a little bit on the brush and the trick is to use little. It really doesn't take a lot. So don't be careful not to sort of have a build up of a great big blob of detergent on the end of the brush. And then we will take our trim wheel and again just to make sure that I'm not putting too much and I'll just put a little wipe here. Yeah. And then the trick is to dab. Can you see what's happening here? I'm dabbing around the edges. I'm holding the brush over. Again, I'm just making sure I don't put any big blobs. I don't want a blob of detergent to go inside the groove. That's what I'm trying to avoid. And just dab it over. That's working quite well. Dab it over there. A little bit more. Make sure you don't have a build up on the brush. Dab it over. And you can fairly quickly go around all the letters. Now, if you do get a little bit of detergent in the groove, there are two reasons not to be overly alarmed and throw your hands up in dismay. The first is that if it's only a little bit of fairy liquid you've got in there, then there's a fair chance that the silicon will adhere in most of the lettering, you know, say there was just a little blob in the corner of that T, but most of the T was clear. There's a fair chance that the silicon will hold stuck to most of the T and it won't matter that there's just a little bit of a, a sort of um, non-sticky bit in the corner. So that's one thing. Second thing, I mean if you if you do get a great big blob at the early on in, in doing this then yeah you might as well wash it off and start again. But if you get to the end and you've spent 10 minutes at it and you really don't want to do that then what you can do is leave it because you can repeat the process. You can go through this, we can put the silicon in, we can we can sorry we can we can put the detergent, then the silicon, wipe it off and see if we get away with it. And if say one of these letters has sort of come off, um, starting to peel and we're just not happy that it, it looks perfect enough, then you can just repeat just a little area and redo it and just get one more letter in by itself. So no need to be overly concerned about this. Right, so I'm just going to press on with that now. Hope that's coming through on the camera that you can catch the light on where the detergent's applying. It does dry uh, to the point you can't really see it, so it's good to have a sort of a system to work your way sort of sequentially and you know that you've done a certain area. So I've done all the bottom and I'll work my way around the top and I'll be right back with you in just a second. Okay, so I've done the fairy liquid bit. I've applied it to all three trim wheels. I've given it about 30 minutes to dry. And now the fun bit. This is where we apply the silicon. Now these small job tubes are ideal for this. And if you're going to keep the nozzle on, I'm not going to, but if you are, I'd cut it back further because you don't want to be restricted with just a tiny flow. Uh, you actually want a decent squirt coming out of this thing. Before I used this fairy liquid technique, I was much more careful. I, I did have that sort of small narrow opening and I was just trying to squeeze it into the gaps there and minimize wh where it went. But now I just do this. Wrap some cling film around your finger, get a good old blob of the stuff, and let's start with this aileron trim and we just wipe it on. And we want 
to make sure we've got it well pressed in. We want every letter to have a good... Let's get some more here. It could be much more generous. And let's get that well in there. And in here. But not everywhere. Remember, unless you covered the entire surface with fairy liquid, there are parts where it would stick and it will be a little fiddly to get out. But certainly over the lettering, over the indentations and over all the areas that you have put the fairy liquid. Now that was the wipe on part and I've just moved my finger to another part of the cling film here to clean a bit. It probably doesn't make much difference actually because now it's going to get more cling film on because I'm going to do the wipe off and this is how it goes. And it's kind of useful to use some paper towel here. And try and get off as much as you can. It'll make it easier to remove what's left later on. Now you can see I've taken some off there and there's a little bit of a blob appearing where it's kind of taken too much out. I'm just going to fill that in again. There we go. That's better. And I'm just going to get some of the stuff that's around the edges here. It's a lot easier to remove now than later, but hopefully if I've covered enough area with fair liquid, it'll still be easy enough to remove. So that is part two, and I'm going to do that on all three of these wheels now. This elevator trim wheel's coming out really nice, isn't it? I think this is going to look great. There's some large areas between the letters here that it's easy to get a good wipe at. So I'm just going to really try and get the silicon shifted there. Because it, it, the silicon does like to stick inside these grooves. You can see the grooves a lot more obvious now, can't you? And um, those are the kind of layer heights as the uh, as the materials printed. So I'm getting as much of that out of those grooves as I can at this stage. Okay, I think that's enough. Right, there we go. That's all three wheels done. The next step is let them dry. The recommended amount of time is about 24 hours. So I'll give it a full 24 hours and then I'll pick that up in the video in just a second. Okay, so the silicon has had 24 hours and the next step is just tidy it up a little. Now I've already just started here and you can see that it does start to peel away. So we're, we're getting the benefit already of the fact that that had some of the fairy liquid on and uh, it's uh, making it more easy to remove and there's, uh, there's a kind of non-adhesive aspect to it. But what I'm going to do, just to make it a lot quicker and a lot easier, is go and soak it under some warm running water. So I'll be back in just a second. And that is the result purely of running warm water over it. You can see that so much of the silicon's come away already, uh, and that's without me rubbing it. It, it just washed off. Um, just the running stream of water just started washing it off. And it's a fairly simple process now. Um, it'll take a little bit of time. Um, you'll find that there are some areas that you'd rather have done a slightly better job with the fairy liquid and uh, that might stick a bit more. Um, you might need to run it under some water again. Um, as you sort of, what I've found is you can, I mean it's all sticks doesn't it, so start pulling away but do it with care because then you, you will find maybe that a piece of this is stuck to a corner of a letter and you're just a little bit worried about the letter coming free. But um, what I find helpful at times is paper towel is good because your hands get quite sticky. And what you can do is, get, as you get a little bit more confident that it's, it's um, in there but securely, the paper towel's got a bit of extra friction and you can just start grabbing at the edges and 
and peeling it away. And remember that if a letter comes out, you can always repeat this process. So I'm just going to spend a little time on that and then I'll be back with you very shortly. Okay, so I'm about five or six minutes into this now and I'm getting kind of close to the to the quality that I'd be happy with actually. I've got to wash the bits off of course. Um, and, and it's really a case of how long you want to spend on it. Um, the, uh, the good news is I'm not, I haven't lost any letters yet, although this letter L is a little bit loose. There you go, at the top. Um, I may, oh, I may just leave that. If the rest of it stays in, I'll probably just leave it. Um, but you can see that that would be something you could, you could just fill in again later. Or I don't know, maybe I could glue that little bit down. Um, but the other letters are staying well. It depends a little bit as well on how deep the indentations are. They were actually quite shallow in here, whereas they're much deeper in here. So you get a lot more protection to the, the letters uh, falling out. There's much more contact of silicon sunk inside the, uh, the grooves. So that's, um, that's going to be an easy one, I would think. Anyway, I'm going to spend a bit more time on this and we'll see what sort of 15 minutes brings me. So back with you shortly. And that's what you have for when you're finished. I have to say, these were so much easier to do than the elevator trim. And the reason is that, well, another reason, I've already told you one, which is that the letters are sunk more deeply. And in fact, I think what I'll do is the version that I send you, that I will release, I will sink the letters a little bit lower. Uh, there's no reason why not. Um, so that helps. Uh, it means that you can get more contact of silicon inside the letter and it's less likely to peel. There's a second reason though, and that is that these letters are on a slope. So you've got the ridges of the 3D printing, which are in a stepped layer, really. They're, they're steps rather than a smooth slope. Whereas this, this is a smooth surface. So the edge of the letter against this top surface, which is a pretty smooth top surface, is, is sharp, quite a bit sharper. So um, it's easier to just peel away the silicon and, and have it just tear off on the edge without uh, having a kind of jagginess and, and the bits. But those are fabulous, I think. Okay, so that's all we have time for now. This is one of my shorter videos. Remember to subscribe if you like what I'm doing here, and particularly if you want more Mustang P51 stuff. In fact, if you would like to make this full pedestal, not only do I have the wheels for them, but I have most of the rest of it already. This is how they fit on. That's the aileron at the back, the rudder here, and then the elevator trim goes on the front. We've got our landing gear, and then the flap sleever here. So a little bit more to be done, but it won't be long now, folks. That's all for now.